Hello, this is Margaret Fetty from the University of Sewing at the Tailored Fit. And today I wanted to talk to you about needles and threads specifically in relation to your Bernina sewing machine. So you've just spent a bunch of money on a lovely, lovely machine. I don't think there is a better machine on the market. I personally don't believe that there is. I love our machines, but we wanna take care of them. And part of taking care of your machine is using the appropriate needles and using the appropriate thread. And besides that, you don't wanna be frustrated by doing a bunch of work and having problems with your sewing machine. So let's talk about what it takes to have the right needles and have the right threads so that you have the least amount of problems. Well, let's start off first off with our needles. When you buy a sewing machine from me, I try to make sure that you get a copy of the pocket guide and the Cliff Notes version of Schmidt's needles. And these are free. I don't ask you to pay for these. Um, this is kind of a comprehensive guide of what needles and thread are available from Schmidt's. This is more your Cliff Notes. It just kind of gets you down to the nitty gritty. What do the colors mean and what does the tip and so forth look like on your needle? And for those of you who are real sewing machine needle uh, nerds, you can always, there's a wonderful webinar that Bernina did on needles that's quite a long uh, it's actually two different webinars. I think it's about two hours long that you can watch if you're really fascinated by this. So in front of me, I have Schmidt's Universal Needles. I have some Microtex needles. I have quilting needles. I have an assortment of quilting needles. I have jean needles. And the one I didn't remember to bring, there's also, there are also stretch needles. So if you look at this front cover, you'll see that there are some numbers right here. This 130705H is the system. That actually refers to home sewing machine needles. And then down below is the size of the needles. So you've got 80 slash 12 in this case. And as you see, they put the kind of needle in the middle of the package and then they put the system, and then they put the size. So let's talk about that a little bit to understand what they mean by that. So first of all, let's talk about the kinds of needles. The kinds of needles are going to either refer to how they sew through something universal, meaning that they believe that that needle will most often go through a wide variety of materials, woven and knit. And when I talk about woven, I'm talking about something like your quilting cotton. And when I talk about knit, I'm talking something like the sweater I'm wearing. Well, it's actually kind of a jersey knit. And maybe you wouldn't call it a sweater, but a little jacket. But it's made up of knits, knit material. And knits are made up of loops. So when you are sewing with the universal needle, they think that it's going to go through most of the wovens and most of the knit materials. Your Microtex needle refers to the type of point and it is for sewing through wovens. Microtex needles have a very fine tip. They have, um, and when I'm referring to our tip, I'm referring to the tip of the needle and it's a long thin tip and it's pointy. Now this one seems to be kind of rounded off. This is probably more like what you would see on your universal needle. The universal needle has a little bit of a rounded point. Your Microtex needle has a very pointy tip and is thin. When we talk about our quilting needles, that is the process of sewing through a piece of fabric, a piece of batting, and another piece of fabric. Those two upper and the upper and lower pieces of fabric are typically going to be quilting cotton. In between, you might have something like polyester batting, or you might have cotton batting, or you might have bamboo batting, whatever it is. The idea with these needles is that they are going to have a nice fine point. They're going to go through woven materials well, and they are going to last longer because when you're going through all those layers, it actually wears the needle out faster. So they make the quilting needles more durable. Jeans needles. 
jeans needles and leather needles, and there's actually a leather needle that Schmetz makes also, um, are shaped like a wedge, which means that they have very strong piercing power to go through something like a heavy denim or a canvas or anything that maybe like an upholstery fabric. So, and then I told you there's a stretch needle. The stretch needles are made up for fabrics that have lycra or spandex in it. And they have a rounded point so that they push the fabric aside rather than piercing it. And that's really important because, because of the way that knits are made, they're made up with loops. And if you pierce that loop and you break it, then you have a runner in the fabric. So that wouldn't be very good. So the idea here is that you want to use the correct needle for the job you're doing. If you're sewing through knits, I recommend the stretch needles. If you're sewing through wovens, I recommend the Microtex needles. You, with your machine, you will get a packet of needles that say Bernina on it, and those are gonna be all universal needles. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with a universal needle, but I sew a lot. And I just want to have the least amount of problems possible. So I tend to focus on having Microtex needles and stretch needles. And then when I have a specialty job, like doing a canvas bag, or maybe I'm sewing together a pair of pants and they're made out of a denim, I will pick up my jeans needles for that. Whenever I'm doing machine quilting, I find that the machine quilting doing free motion, or if you're using your walking foot and you're doing quilting through those three layers, use your quilting needles, you're gonna get better response from your machine if you use the appropriate needle for the job. Needles are not that expensive. An entire package, the most expensive package we have of needles, I think is a 10 pack for $10. And most of these needles at the most run about a dollar or a dollar and a quarter for a needle. Do not, don't be chintzy on this. You've got a brand new machine that you really, you know, you spend a lot of money on it. And you, if you're using dull needles, you can break the needle, you can damage your fabric, you can, actually cause damage to your sewing machine. Because if that needle breaks and it hits the hook mechanism, that's the part that your bobbin sits into, you can damage that. So what I recommend you do is for big projects, you might wanna change your needle twice. For smaller projects, if you're just making a top, if you're making something like a baby quilt, you probably only need to change your needle at the beginning of the project, but six to eight hours worth of sewing is about all you should put on a needle. And the last thing we have to talk about, which is actually really important, is the sizes of the needle. Sizes of the needles are really important because my when I was working on Broadway, what I was told is use the smallest needle that will get the job done. And the idea behind that was that you're putting a smaller hole into your fabric. And so what is the, what are these sizes? What do they mean? So I told you earlier that the size of this universal needle was 80 slash 12. And 80 refers to the European measurement. 12 refers to the U.S. measurement. And so what you're looking at here is... The needle sizes go from the smallest one is actually a size eight. The smallest one I have here is a size 10. Um, and I'm gonna just use the English measurements because it's much easier for me to talk about it. So we've got a 10, a 12, and a 14 sitting here. So our eight would be here, our 16 and our 18 over here. So the, the way that needles run is they have an eight, a 10, 11, I'll explain that in a minute. A 12, a 14, a 16, and an 18. Those are the needle sizes for home sewing machines. The smallest one is an eight. The next size up is a 10. Then you've got a 12, a 14, a 16, and an 18. The small ones, the eights, you would use that for something like silk chiffon. The number 10s would be good for something like a cotton lawn, your Liberty of London, uh, cotton lawns would be a good example of that. Your number 12 is the middle of the pack. 
The number 12 is a needle that would be most commonly used for your quilting cottons. Your number 14 is gonna be something like light to medium weight denims, a canvas material. 16 is gonna be a heavier weight canvas or a heavier denim. And then your size 18 is something like upholstery material. But I'm just gonna tell you what I tell every one of my students. If you're needing to use a size 18 needle to not break a needle, you are probably working on a project that is best for an industrial sewing machine. These are home sewing machines. Don't go and use them as if they're an industrial. They're not. They're still, they have a wonderfully big and powerful motor and they can do an awful lot, but they aren't an industrial sewing machine. So don't treat them like that. Um, if you need an industrial sewing machine, they're not that expensive, go and buy one. But don't go and abuse your home sewing machine that you just spent a couple thousand dollars or more on because you aren't willing to go and have the proper tool for the job. I was talking to you just a little bit ago that there's a size 11 needle. Well, it turns out in the stretch needle market, instead of having a 10, they have an 11. Somebody will have to explain to me sometime why that's true. I have no idea, but they do. So your small size needle for stretch is gonna be an 11. And they also have a 12. So you can have those different sizes that you can uh, access for stretch needles. And when you're talking about stretch needles, again, use the smallest needle that you can because that's going to go through your fabric easier than a bigger needle. Um, one last thing I wanna cover about the, the needles is that home sewing machine needles have a flat back. This flat back helps you install the needle right every single time. So this is the back of the needle, this flat part, and that's gonna go towards the back of your sewing machine. The eye of the needle and the front of the needle has a very long little, uh, what I guess we would call a, a uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of the word I want to use, like a little tube here that we can, that the thread can ride into. And then on the back of the needle is what's called the scarf. This is called a scarf. And so the anatomy of the needle, this opening right here, this scarf is where your hook of your sewing machine goes and picks up the thread. And that's how a stitch is formed. If any part of this needle is bent or the point is perhaps been you hit a pin. If you hit a pin, remove that needle because that needle has now got a blunted point on it and you can damage your fabric. I had one time where I had a bad needle in my sewing machine and I sewed down the whole length of a dress and it was a knit dress and I lifted it up to look at it after I'd sewn it and I had holes all the way down my dress. You don't want that to happen. So if you hit a pin, get rid of that needle. It's not worth it. You don't wanna go and do a whole project and find out it's ruined. So very inexpensive, replace them as needed. Don't use dull needles. Don't be the person who thinks that they have to use a needle for a hundred years. It's not even good for you. So it just will, it will just be, end up being aggravating. So let's talk about the different threads that we can use now on our sewing machine. Your Bernina sewing machine is a somewhat picky machine. We have this wonderful book that is called The Ultimate Thread Guide, which will give you some information. It's kind of like a nice little, it's really not very big. See, it's pretty small. And it has lots of nice information about thread weights and what kind of threads are out there. And as I was saying, our Bernina sewing machine is a little bit picky about what you put in it. No sewing machine likes a lot of lint and dirt in it. So when you're looking at threads, if you pick out a thread and you look down it and it looks really fuzzy, where do you think that fuzz is gonna end up? In your sewing machine. The more dust and dirt that's in your sewing machine, the more you wear it out. It's not good for it. So one of the highly recommended threads for your Bernina sewing machine is called Isocore. The Isocore we carry in the shop is a 40 weight. I'll explain what that means in a moment. And we carry a variety of colors of it. 
We also have Orafil. We only carry a couple of those. It's more of your, um, what I would call your neutrals I tend to carry. This is 100% cotton. The Isocor is 100% polyester. We also carry some other threads. This is a silk finish Mettler thread. And this particular thread is 100% cotton also. And so this one is a, let's go and look at this. We can look on here and it says number 50. So I know it is a 50 weight thread. This Orafil that I'm looking at, it has on it. Let's see if we can find it on there. Hmm. Well, they made it a little bit more difficult. I believe that this, oh, there it is. It's a 50 weight and it has a slash two on the packaging. Sometimes they give you that information, sometimes they don't. They usually have the weight of the thread on here somewhere and they will have it for general construction. What you want is a 50 or a 40 weight thread. Now those th weights are referring to Generally, they're referring to how thick the thread is. So for example, this thread right here is the 40 weight Isocor. This thread, which is considerably thicker, is a 12 weight, 100% cotton decorative thread. This is more the weight, what you would see in top stitching thread. This is for constructing things like putting together a blouse or a pair of pants. This is for decorative stitching. So this thread, you can use your Orafil or your Isocor. Those are two both really good quality threads and they would be both really good threads to use in your machine. Neither one of them are gonna be super linty. Neither one of them are, see it's nice and smooth and it looks really good, that's what you want. You don't want something that looks fuzzy and, and as if it's going to explode with a lot of fuzz in your machine. When you, Mettler is also, excuse me, Mettler is also a very good thread. We also carry another thread called Percentia, and that one is a 50 weight, uh, all 100% cotton thread. So, 40 and 50 weight are what you want to use in constructing things. These threads will either be two ply or three ply, and those numbers just mean how many little tiny threads are they wrapping together to create this thread. What will you want to make sure you're not using is something that is, if you're, if you're constructing something, you don't want to use something that is a 30 weight, you don't want to use something that's a 60 weight. The reason for that is because the 60 weight on numbers, as you, when we were talking about needles, the smallest number was the smallest needle and the largest number was the largest needle. It's exactly the opposite with thread weight. So if you see some sort of thread out there and it says 100 or 80 or 60, that's gonna be a really thin thread and it's not meant for construction. Those are meant for other jobs. It might be meant for a bottom weight embroidery thread, or it might be meant for doing applique, hand applique. But those threads are too thin to construct something because if what you did was you sewed together two items and it was done out of that thin of a thread, you would end up breaking the threads when you went to wear the garment. So you don't want that to happen. And also, if you're putting quilt blocks together, you don't want your quilt blocks the first time somebody sits down on the quilt or pulls it up over them, you don't want those pieces to pull apart and break, which is could happen with the really lightweight threads. When I'm talking about 30 or 20 weight or 12 weight, the threads start getting thick and they start making the seams feel thick and bulky and you wouldn't want to put something together with that either because it doesn't feel nice and it makes the seams look really funny. So now if what you are doing is you're putting together say two upholstery pieces of fabric and you're wanting to make sure that that is going to stay together, well then you might want to use a heavier weight thread for that. 
and I would recommend that you get a sewing machine weight upholstery fabric. Be careful when you go to purchase your threads. A lot of times they put all the threads together in the same uh, display unit. And so maybe at the top, they'll have top stitching thread and they will have hand sewing thread. And then below that, they might have some decorative thread. And then below that, they generally have this big section of all purpose sewing thread. You want to use for constructing, whether it's a quilt or it is a uh, garment, you want to use an all purpose thread. That could be an all purpose cotton, for those of you who like to be purist and putting your quilts together, you can use an all-purpose 100% cotton, but it needs to be an all-purpose thread because when they say all-purpose, what they're meaning is that you can use it to sew a garment or you can use it to sew a pillow or you can use it to sew your quilt blocks. And that's what you want because you want these things to stay put together. The other thing that I wanted to kind of bring out to you and show you is Thread, you know, if you sew a lot, thread can get to be expensive. And so what I do to kind of hold some of those costs down is I have this, and this is made up of a cast iron base so that it doesn't move real easily on me. I can't tip it over real easily, but this is for my cone of thread. And this cone of thread, the cones typically are about half the price of your small spools. So if you can get a nice big cone of thread, then you can save some money on your thread. I typically only buy my cones in my neutral colors. And then when I go to use this cone of thread, what you want to do with it is you want to put it behind where you would typically put your spools of thread. And on your Bernina sewing machine, on these new ones, you'll see there's a little guide right here for thread. Well, if I'm taking my spool of thread, what I want to do is I want to put it in this guide, then I'm going to put it in that guide. And then you just thread your machine like normal. So, and see, it's basically lined up the same place that my horizontal spool would have been sitting. So that's where that would sit. And this is a great way to save some money. We carry big spools of Isocor thread we carry some big spools, as you just saw, of the Mettler 100% cotton, and you can get all of those on our online store. Um, I wanted to go back just real quick because I really like these sulky threads. And this sulky thread that you see right here, that's what sewed this with a blanket stitch around here. But then I doubled it up and I hand stitched this. So, see, you can do this with both a sewing machine or you can use it for hand sewing and these spools are nice because they're not terribly large they're only 50 yards they only cost a dollar 69 they're very inexpensive and that we have lots of colors we have variegated we have solid colors and they will fit through the eye of a size 12 needle now don't try going down smaller than that because you're just going to get frustrated trying to thread the needle. But these will fit in your size 12 needles and I typically use a Microtex needle when I'm doing this. So you can go ahead and use this sulky thread on your sewing machine and for hand sewing. And like I said, they come in these small spools and they're very inexpensive so that you can go ahead and get lots of colors and do some really beautiful either handwork or machine work. So that's what I've got for you today on needles and thread. No, I did not cover every single thing about needles and thread, but I have given you, I hope, enough information that you can go out there and figure out what you need for the projects you're working on right now. If you have any questions, if I can help you with anything, our email address is info at universityofsewing.com. Don't forget we have an online website that is universityofsewing.com and we have a shop in there and we carry lots of threads, lots of needles. I'm always happy to answer questions if you have a specific project and you're just not sure